there is something in common between us and some food. We were not there when this boy was healed. However, the description in this scene is meant to allow us to visualize how much pain was going on in this boy and his father's life. Look at the direct speech when the distressed father addresses Jesus. Look at the vivid description of the boy's symptoms. When we read the same story in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, it is even more terrifying because there we learn that the demon would throw this boy into flames. So one might wonder, in front of so much pain, why is Jesus so harsh in his reply? Faithless and perverse generation, says Jesus. We are so used to a saccharine version of Jesus that when we encounter Christ in the gospel, our first reaction might be, but I thought he was kinder. But let's look at the context. This happens when Jesus has just given his disciples authority to tell the good news, to cure diseases, and to deliver people from demons. In St. Matthew's account, there is a sequel to the boy's story. The disciples come back to Jesus and ask, Master, why shouldn't we do it? And Jesus answers, it is because of your lack of faith. The disciples at this stage are still faithless and perverse. They did try to heal the boy, but not too hard because suppose it doesn't work. Or even worse, suppose it did work. In fact, they lack ambition. The father, on the contrary, is ambitious because he has no choice. He is desperate. His only son is in pain, and he can't take it anymore. The suffering of a child, the meaningless pain inflicted upon an innocent, it is wrong. We can't dismiss it by saying, well, that's life. It is the destruction of life. In French, physical pain and metaphysical evil are both rendered through the same word, le mal. Saint Luke was a medic. He knew something about physical pain as a specific form of evil. He may have heard this story in two ways. As a medic, hearing about a natural healing, and as a believer, hearing about a supernatural exorcism. Etymologically, the word epilepsy through its Greek roots and the word possession through its Latin roots both refer to the fact of falling under a power. You would find these words used about regions, cities, and people seized as captives, seized by an unlawful authority. It marks the total passiveness and subordination of the person, the city, or the region caught by a stronger power. So let us rephrase the story. A father has an only son. This son is under the power of an entity that wants him to suffer and that wants him dead. Jesus decides to fail to heal the boy, but Jesus delivers him and brings him back to the lawful authority of his father. Can you see where this is going? There is someone we need to be delivered from. Many Eastern Christians end the Lord's Prayer by saying, but deliver us from the evil one. Our first reading, just as the reading last week from Isaiah, shows how high and honored Lucifer was before he rebelled and before he became that terror, thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. As Milton puts it, Satan preferred to reign in hell rather than to serve in heaven. If you think it's cool, imagine if this evening, instead of singing, one of the members of our amazing choir decided to yell whatever he or she pleases and to hit everyone with a check. Set the chapel 
You want help? Ask for it. You want joy? Ask for it. You want eternal life? Ask for it. May our Heavenly Father protect you and defend you from all peril. May He give your heart peace and may He guide each of your steps towards eternal life.